do you back squat? Better question, should you be using a back squat in your training program? The back squat, like the bench press, like the deadlift, is a heavily debated exercise. Is it necessary for training or does it pose too great of a risk of injury? Now, if you look at a lot of training programs and a lot of fitness professionals, they'll argue that a squat is one of the most foundational movements to any training program. They'll say it's a necessity. Now, while a squat might be necessary for a program, that doesn't mean that a back squat has to be in your program. This video was designed to give you five modifications for and progressions into a back squat. Because sometimes we need to master the technique first, build the strength, and develop the confidence to load a bar, put it on our back, and drop to the bottom of the squat. At the bottom of our squat hierarchy is the bodyweight squat. It is the bare bones, most basic version to any weighted squat version, including the barbell back squat. It is the exercise that teaches you how to achieve a full range of motion, how to position yourself to prevent injury, aches, pains, and it gets stronger. And it's what will set you up and establish that confidence that you can lift more than just your body weight. So there are a few ways to help develop range of motion and strength with body weight squat. At Complete Performance, we like to utilize our half-sized foam rollers as a measure for when most of our clientele reaches that full range of motion. So, we're gonna set up with this foam roller right behind me here. I'm gonna set up with my feet about shoulder width apart. Now it is to say that everybody's squat stance is unique. Mine might be a bit more narrow, yours might be a bit wider. My toes might be pointed forward, yours might be angled out. If you wanna know more about how to develop your own squat stance, click the link below. Happy to have that conversation with you and to help you figure out your best stance for your body type. But first, in this squat position, my feet are about shoulder width apart with my toes slightly angled out. I'm gonna make sure that foam roller is there and I'm going to lower down into the bottom of that squat and stand back up. I'm opening my hips as I sit down into it. My chest stays up and I stand back up. It is important to note that while I'm not sitting onto this foam roller, I'm just touching as a way to know that, hey, I have reached the bottom of that squat. I, one, don't need to reach any lower, and two, I can start to solidify that point in my mind so that eventually I can perform a high quality body weight squat without the need of some external measure. Body weight squats should be utilized to develop base strength. This is going to set the foundation for any future weighted squat. This is an exercise that I would recommend using in 10, 12, 15, maybe 20 rep sets so that you build the endurance at that end range of motion, develop that strength, and then you can use it to build and add weight into that. Some of the most common mistakes I see when it comes to a body weight squat lies in one, knee positioning. As you lower down, knees start to cave in for what is called valgus and then swing back on the way up. You want those knees to stay on the same path as your middle to third toe on the way down and on the way back up. Second big mistake comes into the pressure on the feet. A lot of times people drop down into that squat, shift into the toes and pull the heels up. We wanna keep that weight right in the middle of the foot because that's gonna help cue our last piece is our upper body positioning. Oftentimes when that weight chart starts to shift, we start to shift that upper back. Rolling forward, kicking the hips back, making this a lot more about our knees and our low back than about our glutes, hamstrings, and quads. Once you've mastered the body weight squat, it's time to move up to the next level of our hierarchy, into the counterbalance squat. The counterbalance squat is an excellent exercise to move into because the load stays light, and it works to establish strength and endurance in uh, some of those muscles that are gonna be necessary when the load starts to get heavy. So let's talk about the counterbalance squat. With the counterbalance squat, you're gonna grab a plate or a dumbbell, 
You're gonna extend those arms out in front. You're gonna sit down into the bottom of that squat and stand back up. The arms stay extended the whole time and I'm really focusing on squeezing through that core, sitting straight down and straight back up. The counter mount of that squat, which you'll notice, really taxes the core. Because that weight is held out here, it's a great exercise for building more strength directly out of the bottom of the squat and for keeping that chest in position. Some common mistakes I see with the counterbalance squat. Letting ourselves drop the arms on the way back up and the way back down. So almost a swinging motion here. The other piece to this is, it's not to say you need to have your elbows totally locked out, but it's bringing that weight into that chest. That does still work the core to some degree, does still lightly add a load to that squat, but it's not asking as much of that core, and it's gonna prevent you from really building that base strength through your core region. The last note about the counterbalance squat is to make sure that you keep the weight light. Just because you've crushed your body weight squats doesn't mean that we want to just add load to our squats. This is a 10 pound plate, a 10 pound, a five pound weight, is really where the majority of our clients are recommended to stay. If you pick up that weight and you feel that that's still too much for you, an arms extended counterbalance squat is a great next progression from your body weight squat. The third level of our hierarchy is a goblet squat. At this point, you've mastered range of motion, basic technique in the body weight squat. You've helped to develop the core and glute strength in a counterbalance squat. It's time to add a little bit more load and build strength in our squatting muscles. Your glutes, your hamstrings, and your quads. So with a goblet squat, you're gonna need one down bell. You're gonna turn it on its side. Hold it right in front of the chest. Brace through the core. You're gonna sit down into that goblet squat and stand back up. With this weight, similar positioning to a counterbalance squat, wherein that weight is still in the front of our chest. The biggest difference being, we have now pulled that weight in here. We're sitting right down into it and standing back up, making sure that that chest stays up, our knees and hips open up, and that we're really prioritizing that drive through the floor to stand back up. At Complete Performance, the goblet squat is one of our favorite squatting variations. It's an exercise that you can continue to add low to without having to worry about bar technique, bar placement in our larger group sessions. It's also an exercise that the majority of our clients feel really confident with. That if they get into a bad position, they can just set the weight down, adjust, reset, or they can just finish the set in a body weight squat. The goblet squat is a great way to add some load, some heavier load, than what you had in a body weight or a counterbalance squat. One key mistake I see with goblet squats is when the weight gets heavy, we sometimes allow that dumbbell to pull us forward. So similar to the mistake with the counterbalance squat, we sit down into that squat, that weight gets heavy, so we allow that shift into the front of our toes here, the hips kick back, and then we stand up. The reason I love to use a goblet squat with the dumbbell in this position is you can tell that goblet goes straight up and straight back down. It should be right along that same path. That dumbbell shouldn't swing out and hit you in the chest or the stomach throughout the motion. The next step in our squat hierarchy is a racked dumbbell squat. You'll notice with each of these levels, we're changing the way the weight is loaded on our body so that we can continue to get ready for the big lift, the back squat where we can really add some load. The next variation, the rack squat, is a great way to teach you to have that position of the weight loaded on your shoulders instead of in the front of your body. So with a rack squat, you're gonna grab a dumbbell in each hand. We're going to rest the edges of the dumbbells on the shoulders. We're gonna push those elbows up, and then we're gonna sit down into that squat and stand back up. The squat portion of the exercise doesn't change with any of these variations. We're still sitting the hips right down into it, driving the chest right back up. With the rack to squat, 
reason we like this as a precursor to a front squat, to a back squat, is because you can keep the load fairly light while not as heavy as the barbell. Barbells are made to be 35 pound, 45 pound for adults. If you're lucky, your gym might have a 25 pound barbell for you to start using. Dumbbells, we can get pretty creative. We can use a 10 in each hand, a five in each hand, and you can learn about that bracing position and how to set yourself up for that best position down the road. This is another exercise where you can really add and progress yourself by adding load heavier and heavier as you get stronger. Now, it's not to say that one of the big mistakes I see with a rack squat is the elbow position. We allow those elbows to drift down to our sides and that really puts a lot of stress on our elbows and on our wrists. This makes it an upper body exercise, one that we're trying to avoid because it's leg day. So in this position, really push those elbows up. That's gonna help embrace and engage that core so we can stay in that chest up position throughout our full range of motion. What I will say is if you have that struggle to keep those elbows up, it might be time to look at dropping the weight a little bit lighter so that you can build that strength, not just in your lower body, but in your upper body to keep that weight up. The next stop in our squat hierarchy is the barbell front squat. The barbell front squat has two different positions. I'm gonna show you both and allow you to play around with which is best suited for your body. Now, I do wanna make note that typically, I would load the bar this way and back out, but so that you can continue to see my form and my technique, I'm gonna come out this way and back in to the rack when I come back in. So, the first position for a barbell front squat is to set yourself up underneath the bar, right on top of the shoulders. My arms are straight out here, and really, I should be able to pick this bar up and that bar doesn't go anywhere. Right back down. Then, once I'm in that position, I'm gonna cross one arm over, cross the other arm over, and hold onto that ball. Now I step out of the rack up here. I'm gonna keep that, those elbows up like I did with the rack squat. And now I'm gonna sit myself down into it and stand back up. Again, the squat technique in movement of the lower body doesn't change when we move from variation to variation. We're just changing where the load is to change how we add st stress and change the stimuli to our body. So elbows stay up and really pushing those elbows up and standing back up. That is the most friendly way to get into a front squat position. What you might see in popular high level athletes is a different position where the hands stay on the bar, they push those elbows up underneath, and those hands are looking under the bar. So I'm in this squat position here. I'm going to push the elbows up and sit into that position. The hardest part about this variation is the wrist and forearm mobility. Most people, most general population adults, aren't in a position where they can just get that elbow back into position. What I see oftentimes is people think this is the position they can get into. They think that they have the ability to get there, so they grab that bar and they just kind of push their wrist forward and hold here. This is gonna add a lot of stress to your wrist and your elbows in this exercise, and it's gonna make it really difficult to maintain your upper body position as you go into the bottom of that squat. What I recommend, see what works best for you, but maybe start with the variation where you cross over. As you progress in your training programs, you work on building mobility in not just your squat position, but your upper body positions as well. This may be a variation that you can get into. The last variation at the top of our pyramid is the barbell back squat. The barbell back squat is kind of the pinnacle of strength when it comes to squats. Just like with the front squat, I'm gonna demonstrate the barbell back squat where I step into the rack and walk forwards out to you, and then back in on the way back in. Typical recommendations are that I get into the rack this way, back it out when I'm fresh, and then walk forward into the rack to react. So when I'm getting into position for the back squat, 
then I come underneath it with my head, and I'm gonna rest that bar right on top of my shoulders here. As I walk that bar out, feet are in that nice even stance. I'm gonna lower down into that squat, and I'm going to stand back up. That bar stays locked in into position because I'm squeezing through my armpits here, and I'm racing through that core. All that work that I've done to build in my body weight squat, my counterbalance squat, my goblet, my rack squat, has built me and trained me to this point to maintain that weight in that position. Now, what I do want to note is that the back squat is the one variation of the squat where you might have more of a forward lean depending on your bar position. Now, your bar position is unique to you and your body type. And this would again be something where I would say, click the link below, Let's, you and I, sit down to chat about how we can find the best bar placement for your body type. One of the biggest complaints about barbell back squats, and barbell front squats for that matter, is the discomfort of the bar, either across your chest or across your neck. And I won't lie, it's not comfortable. It takes some time to get used to that. In simple terms, it's really like building a callus on your hand. You're just teaching your body to Hold a little bit of extra padding on the shoulders, on the back of the neck, to allow for that right position. You're also giving your body time to develop the strength to hold that bar in that position. Because when it's new and we just started this exercise, those muscles aren't confident in what they're doing. For our Complete Performance clients, the back squat is not an everyday lower body exercise. We'll use these different squat variations throughout the week, throughout our fit training programs, to develop their strength to get them to a back squat. The back squat should be a tool to measure strength, to really measure progress, but to develop your overall range of motion, to get lean, to build muscle, to tone up, to lose weight. It's gonna require a combination of all of these squat exercises to get you to that end goal. If you're ready to get started and you're looking for the training the accountability and the guidance to go with it, click the link below, sign up for a free trial workout virtually or in person so that we can break down what it is that you're looking for, where you're at with squats, and how you can have the best program built for you to get you the results that you're looking for.